What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final, final little pass is a business. Dead Meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and we're a boyfriend and girlfriend, and we like to get scared together. Yep. Yeah, we have something fun this week. Um, we're going to talk about a remake that we both really like. Yeah. I haven't seen the original. I did. The original scared me a lot when oh. I was a kid. I don't know why. It must have been on TV or it's something. It's from like the 50s, right? It is. It's from 58 i have here oh there it is we're talking about the blob of yeah horrors. directed by chuck russell mm-hmm. who cut his teeth on dream warriors the third nightmare movie a lot of people's favorite nightmare movie mm-hmm. my my close second yeah i'll agree with that mm-hmm. he also did uh the mask he did the mask like jim carrey the mask that's a movie i'll defend i really like the mask a lot but he also did scorpion king I haven't seen Scorpion King. I've never <laughs> felt the need to see Scorpion King. Have you seen it? Probably when it came out in theaters. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we liked this one because uh, had you seen this? I'd not, but everyone tells me to watch it. And yeah. They say that I would love it, and like highly, you're right. highly requested. I got a lot of emails um, for this one. Also, really quick, should we explain um, our our setup for the next couple? Yeah, weeks? let's do that right off the the top so that people don't miss it. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so I'm j- I'm just getting a little minor surgery a week uh, on Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, nothing big, just a little thing with my nose so I can breathe better. <laughs> Sometimes you may maybe you hear the whistle. Sometimes it doesn't do it, but it definitely does it at night. It sucks. I it have to sucks. use breathe right. Str- okay. <laughs> what I'm saying, it doesn't agreeing with you. It sucks. <laughs> it does suck, and I have to use breathe right <laughs> strips to to breathe at night. So they're gonna go in there fucking scoop some stuff out it'll be great yeah. uh but if fucking with my nose that's gonna make me so i sound uh weird for probably a few and weeks they said your face is gonna be swollen, swollen so yeah so i'm we... trying to get everything filmed and taken care of before then so yeah. it's just off camera so the reason that. we bring it up is next week we're not gonna do the usual pattern of review then either like a research mm-hmm. thing or game then another review we're gonna do three reviews in a row essentially yeah because these take me a lot less time to it's way easier prep. for us to watch a movie and talk about it than for chelsea to do a bunch of research right and then when we realized episode. we had to backlog a bunch of stuff this week yeah th- there was no way i was gonna get something done yeah so we're actually recording next week's episode right, right after, after this, this which is why i just cracked open a red and bowl. i'll give you a hint I, I normally can't give hints because i don't really know what movie you're gonna do oh, so i'll give you now, a hint though. this next movie is a remake but it's a remake of a remake oh yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that's our hint for what we're gonna do next week uh, it's gonna be a really fun thinking episode. about that will really melt your brain mm-hmm. <laughs> all right so Let's get to the blob. The blob. Yeah, let's get blob in here. I was looking at the original movie because mm-hmm. I was curious, mostly because it, it scared me so much as a kid. I don't know why. I think it was just the shots of it because there is the the movie theater scene is from the original where it kind of comes through the projection booth mm-hmm. and there's shots of it also trying to get it under the freezer door. And I remember the freezer door part when I was a kid it scared me so much. Um, it's kind of like a gross, it's like a dark brown, blackish, um, it almost looks like tar, and then as it eats people, it turns red. Is it in color, the original? It is. Oh, I just assumed it was like a black and white movie. Yeah. Huh. Every one of you watching this screen, look out, because soon, very soon, the most horrifying monster menace ever conceived will be oozing into this theater. Is it 30 years later? Is this 88? It's, yeah, it, it's literally 30 years okay later that yeah. this remake happens um yeah co-written by frank darabont yeah, yeah. frank darabont who uh co- also dream warriors right N- Ooh, i forget maybe yeah that might be right he had something to do with one of the freddies you're right i think it yeah uh i mostly know him for his stephen king adaptations include he wrote uh the mist and directed the mist mm-hmm. but he also wrote and directed shawshank and Green Mile. And Green Mile. Mm-hmm. He at least wrote those two. I forget if he directed, but I think he did. Those. It's weird because those are the two Stephen King movies I always forget are from Stephen King yeah. works because they feel so... Well, those in Stand By Me. 
Yeah, that yeah. too. Those feel so different, and I don't. They're less horror. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they they have more of his magical realism, though. Sure. Uh, well, maybe not Shawshank, but he also, of course, created the Walking Dead TV show based on the comic graphic novel sorry <laughs> i have another note about an actor here this is just a fun fact that no one will care about except me uh paul who's like the football boyfriend played by donovan leitch who is the son of the donovan do you know donovan no um not no, donovan. donovan not don not donovan from survivor <laughs> that's who i know this that's is donovan. donovan of catch the wind and sunshine sunshine superman you would know Sunshine Superman if you heard it. I don't know if I would. This oh, is another oh, is a musician. Yeah. Okay. Da, 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 In the God of Vida? No, it's not. In the God of Vida, baby. <laughs> this is another strawberry alarm clock thing where you have oh, no, no idea what the fuck I'm talking I about. I think I just have an affinity for weird late 60s. 70s yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's more folksy though. He's not a psychedelic. Cuz Catch the Wind hey, is a very Some of those folksy guys got pretty psychedelic by the end That's of that true. decade. That's true. I think he was a LA guy too in the late 60s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he got freaky. Uh all right. Fun fact is that this movie stars Shawnee Smith who is famously Amanda from the Saw series. I love her work in the Saw series, but here she's how old did we say? 19, I think. 18 or 19, yeah. Yeah, holy shit. And it's yeah. hilarious because she's playing a cheerleader like a popular girl in school and i i just commented on how like think about like the cheerleader from your high school and what if they grew up to be amanda from saw <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah <laughs> this would be a fun little prequel if we wanted to do the terrible pixar verse thing where we oh, try yeah. and connect all of her films yeah which people always fucking do it doesn't not everything needs to be connected not everything needs to be in a universe nope we open on a skiing town, which when I posted about this movie, we, I got a lot of tweets saying it's hilarious because they filmed this in, I think, Louisiana, mm. where there's just not snow. And sure enough, there is no snow anywhere. Yeah, it's like a problem. It looks like a ghost town. I was surprised that this town was even a town where people lived in because the opening feels like it's a ghost town. Yeah, kind of like that town in the next week's in movie. In the next movie that we're going <laughs> to watch. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and then there, it's but there, it's not deserved. They're just all the football game, the high school football yeah. game. Oh yeah, where that Paul boy, Paul is uh being a footballer. Shawnee, I'm just calling her Shawnee. What is her character's name? Mm, Meg. Oh Meg. Okay, so she's checking out the hot football player. Yeah, and they're debating whether or not she's into him, which she is. She into him. When I ask her out. <laughs> Bullshit. When? 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 When the time is right. Yeah, right. Timing's everything. Oh, yeah, which is after he which, gets fucking, after he gets a concussion, most he gets, likely. I thought, honestly, I thought <laughs> this dude was dead. He gets tackled during this football game, and I thought it was going to be, I don't know, I don't know what I was thinking. I thought it was going to reveal that he had his neck snapped or oh my something. God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But no, he's apparently fine. Either that or, yes, severely oh, concussed. Oh, he's definitely concussed. Yeah. He's a high school football so player. So he asks her out, and it's very cute. Uh, then we meet Bad Boy. Flag. Flag. Just his name, Flag. He's got a mullet, a leather jacket, smoking a cigarette, riding a motorcycle. And he litters. And he litters. And he doesn't wear a helmet. Oh, well, naturally. Yeah. He would hide so that mullet. He is a bad. Jerry curl. Boy. He's a bad mamma jamma played by Kevin, Kevin Dillon. Dillon. Matt Dillon's younger brother. Man clearly related to Matt Dillon. He looks they just look like Matt same. Dillon. Yeah, it's insane. But I definitely feel bad for him. I'm also getting a little um, James Marsden. Didn't you say Benedict Cumberbatch? And Benedict Cumberbatch, yeah. <laughs> From yeah. Certain angles. From certain angles, he looks a lot like Benedict Cumberbatch to me. And I would love to see Benedict Cumberbatch <laughs> take on the role of mullet having motorcycle dude who hangs out in the woods for some reason just well, by he's himself. trying to jump broken bridges that's true he's trying to make the sweet jump there's a bridge that's broken um which basically it's a ramp essentially at this point it's not a bridge anymore he, it's like the it's like that simpsons episode he's trying to do the <laughs> daredevil he's bark. trying to do the yeah the <laughs> evil Knievel style jump of, <laughs> across this river and he just eats total shit but no he's fine even though there's a guy who i wrote was a cartoon woods hobo <laughs> the movie credits him as can man can man i love oh that's <laughs> so great he's can man okay. i wasn't sure what else to call him yeah no let's call him can man can man laughs at him and then also gives him a slow clap and <laughs> oh yeah that's right <laughs> yeah you know you 
fucked up. You just ate such shit if some dude who lives in the woods pops out and decides to give you the... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Flag is not the favorite person of the sheriff in town. No. Who is Sheriff Geller, I guess? I don't give a fuck about his character's name because he is played by Jeffrey DeMunn, who is fucking Dale in The Walking Dead in season just one? No. No. He makes it to two. He goes out in two. Spoiler alert. Everyone dies in that show. But uh, he's also in The Mist. He is the guy who famously runs in saying something in The Mist. Something in The Mist. So another Frank Darabont jam yeah. that he's part I, of. I noticed when I was looking at the cast for this, there's a lot of overlap between actors, which makes sense. Yeah. And uh, Jeffrey Dumont hilariously you know in the mist and the walking dead he's got that he's got that full white beard and so when can man first popped out i was like it's jeffrey Demon because that guy's rocking the same oh, kind of facial weird. hair but no then we meet jeffrey Demon. he is clean shaven and you know obviously 20 years younger whoa. and it was like whoa he it's weird to see him young do you think he was a good looking guy in this yeah i don't know i think maybe he looked a little too dadly for me he's pretty daddy <laughs> yeah baby it's pretty daddy <laughs> whoops the way you said that was so confident i can't get over it it's pretty daddy it's pretty pretty daddy uh i wrote down again just things that interest me specifically jeff demun also played andre chikatilo in a movie so this is an x which i've never seen but andre chikatilo was a russian serial killer um very 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 scary dude i would love to see him play that character though i've heard the movie's not great okay but i bet he is really good in it i like jeffrey demon i like what he does even though dale was a little annoying he didn't deserve what he got how did he die fell into a pit and got eaten by zombies and sucks yeah on that fucking farm on that stupid fucking farm that they spent all of season two on because mad men took all their money that's right yeah oops (laughs) wouldn't change a thing sorry not sorry sorry not sorry um yeah i don't watch walking dead one of the things i do know about it is that there's a whole season on a farm yep Season two. Yeah. And that was our fault because we're a Mad Men fan. <laughs> totally worth <laughs> we it. We took all your money. <laughs> uh, Give it to this character drama. Yes. <laughs> the costumes. costumes. The costumes. <laughs> <laughs> Name brands. <laughs> <laughs> we have to get the rights to use Campbell's. So, so he's he's uh, Sheriff Geller. Jeffrey Demon is flirting with uh, the uh, a, a diner waitress. Yes, name Fran. No, she owns the diner. This oh, is I'm important. sorry. That was yeah, wrong that's her that diner. I thought she was the waitress too. But well, no, she, she is waiting, right? Yeah, she's tending to her customers. But she's being a good restaurant owner. She's good. She's it's actually- a nice. Yeah. What'd you say? Sex- sexually she, what? She's actually doing the work. Oh, I thought you said like sexually it's active. Like which sexual I mean, work. Oh. That's not for a But it is a nice little, uh, it is, small town romance between these two. I like it's it. It's very Twin Peaks. Mm-hmm. This whole diner and, you know, just the small town feel. When was Twin Peaks out? Around the exact same time? I think maybe... The next year. Okay. I think Twin Peaks was early 90s, maybe started 89. Mm-hmm, Don't quote mm-hmm. me. Uh, Flag's bike is all fucked up, so he goes to, what, a garage that he works at, maybe? He either works at or he's friends with the guy who works there, Moss. Moss, who... Shit, you didn't write down the actor's name? Oh, no. I don't know the actor's shit. name, but this dude voices Jet Black in Cowboy Bebop. Oh, shit. I should have written Second build him down. character after Spike. There maybe. was another guy in this who, when I clicked on his page, he also voiced characters in Cowboy Bebop, and I should have written that down, too. Oh, man. Fuck. That's okay. But yeah, this dude, uh, Moss, has an awesome voice. There's 12 sockets in that set. 12. And they better all be there when I get it back. But yeah, I I also forget the context, but he definitely used terrassing. Before you know it, we're not gonna be terrassing through this town with no apologies. I've never heard it used like that before, but it's so great. Meanwhile, Can Man sees the blob crash to Earth because, of course, as soon as we meet this character, we know he's going to be the first fucking dude to see the blob. Yeah. Because in every movie, if we meet a character that's this guy, they're going to be the first person to if see If they're older, whatever. likely homeless, hang out in drunk. the woods. Yeah. Maybe they have a dog. Oh, yeah. Often they have a dog. Yeah. I would love to make uh, that would be a great series on dead meat is just like horror tropes 
And I this think would that'd be, be one fun. Of them. That I would think be a, a, lot a really, really fun like one. It. Yeah, because like this dude. Yeah, and then, like less obvious horror tropes, you know? Yeah, not like Final Girl. Well, how yeah. the fuck can you talk about that? It's already been talked about, but stuff like we this. We talk about it on the podcast. <laughs> and you, check out that episode. Check out that episode of the podcast. Uh, yeah, that'd be, that'd be a good one is, yeah, like older gentlemen, older loner gentlemen who the town would think was crazy if he survived and yeah, told got, anyone. Like Crazy Ralph. You got uh, uh, the dude from Killer Clowns from Killer Outer Space. Killer Clowns, yeah. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. That's like the exact same scenario. It's the yes. This. That guy does have a dog. Mm-hmm. Uh, poo! <laughs> you killed my poo! I'll tear <laughs> this down bear. with my bare hands! <laughs> <laughs> this guy, Camman's played by Billy Beck, who uh, primarily is listed on Wikipedia as American Clown. That's awesome. Oh, like an actual clown. Yes. Oh, okay. No, not not like in a movie. A movie. Called no, clown. no, no, no. Okay. He just he he was a clown. I I think that's a bygone yep. era. Ain't no clowns. You're not no gonna mo. be a famous clown anymore. Sorry. Um, I feel you know as much as people are very afraid of clowns. Clowns work very hard. You've been you've been a uh, staunch defender of clowns I since am. I've ever known you. Because well, you cause live next to I, a clown, my right? neighbor growing up was a clown, professional you know clown, one. Caboose the clown. He was super cool. He <laughs> don't laugh at Caboose. That's such a good name because he was like a railroad clown. <laughs> Caboose the yeah, clown. Yeah, but they were always the family that we lived next to that they could count on us to watch their kids and vice versa. So he was really cool. So for me, there's not that weird fear of, oh God, what's a clown like at home? There's yeah. not like that weird John Wayne Gacy kind of <laughs> association because he was a very nice man. Um, also, did you know there's a clowning course at the University of Michigan? I did not know the that. The theater department, uh, I don't know if it's just the theater department that has to do it or musical theater students have to do it too, but I think maybe to get your major, you have to take a clowning course. Oh. Because clowning's a thing. David Bowie learned how to clown, didn't he? he or was it mime? mime? He learned how to mime. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But it's a whole, it's an art form. <laughs> what if I just do a clowning podcast? Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, you could do one about clowns in horror movies. <laughs> Like yeah, that, I mean that'll happen eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make that episode. Run at the some fuck point. out of ideas! And I don't <laughs> know clowns. <laughs> we also meet Reverend Del Close around this time. Yeah, see, Del Close is like as someone who has done a lot of improv. Yeah. Del Close is like he's, spoken about in hushed tones yeah, of he's reverence. God. Yeah, there was the Del Close Theater uh, that was part of I.O. West before it got shut down a couple of years ago. Yes. Right? I think so. That's where our sketch comedy would play, right? In the Del Close That's Theater. That's right. Yep. Uh, years ago when we started our sketch comedy and our videos would play in the sketch comedy Smackdown or some shit like that. Yeah, hell met yeah. Met a lot of cool people that way. That's how we met. Uh, so the research episode I'm going to do at the end of this month when you're all recovered from surgery. That's right. Our guest for that one, we met at the Del Close Theater. Yeah, Joey Clift. Yeah. Who also did a Patreon track, a commentary track yes. with us on Zombievers. Yeah. But yeah, Del Close is... All of your favorite comedians, maybe. Um, he he trained a lot of SNL. People. Yes, yes, like classic. Com- so think of basically any classic comedian from the seventies, eighties, nineties. Yeah, Saturday Night Live. Del Close was there. Yeah, their teacher essentially. And he, and this movie plays the Reverend. Yes, he does. And He's so great in this. Yeah, he uh, he catches he catches Paul that that football player Paul. and his friend. I think Fuck face. Scott? What's his name? Scott. It starts with an S. This guy's an asshole. Fuck Scott. Fucking Scott. We all hate Scott. Uh, they're buying condoms in uh, the store. So meanwhile, in the Killer Clowns Woods, mm-hmm. uh, Candyman's poking the blob with a stick. Not Candyman. Canman. Canman. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> the <laughs> Candyman versus the Blob. Oh my god. The crossover we didn't know we needed. Yeah. Yeah, and the Blob kind of jumps onto hand. him and attacks him. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, Lucy didn't like that. That's okay. So, that sound. Shawnee's younger brother. I just I don't even use her character name in these notes. She's just Shawnee. Mm-hmm. Her younger brother and his friend, meanwhile, are at home. They're at her house. They're trying to get permission from their uh, Shawnee's mom to see Garden Tool Massacre. Yeah, which is a movie. It's very much like what was the Groundhog Day Twelve or whatever from Monster Squad. Yeah, it's just your standard slasher because I think. It, 
yeah, they say there's a hockey mask. There's a killer. guy in a hockey mask. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But don't worry, there's no sex or anything bad. I've definitely used that line before when I was a kid. Yeah. Oh, for sure. It's your basic slice and dice. Your basic what? The thing about this movie that I really love is that everyone's pretty intelligent. All the characters, um, they're, it never feels like they're doing dumb shit just for the purpose of the plot. Yes. Which is nice. And it's surprising. We'll get to a few surprises very quickly. Mm-hmm. But some turns it takes, I didn't expect. I'll say, and we talked about this during Monster Squad and got some some guff for it, but it's a thing I just, I tend not to like about 80s films because often, especially 80s comedies and 80s raunchy comedies, there's just sex crimes all up in these movies. Got one but in it, here. it's because it was so, but this one is, like I said, I think it's a little more self aware of what is happening. Yeah, I think you're it, not supposed you're spo- to think this is funny. Yeah, I think you're supposed to dislike the guy and i appreciated it. it so that's when i i therefore do not have an issue with the scene yeah. which we're not at yet but we'll talk about it we'll get there real soon yeah. you hold tight yeah but yeah so garden tool massacre mm-hmm. uh candy clark who plays the mom she was the lady in the man who fell to earth oh that means she probably had sex with david I, bowie I, when i looked at her wikipedia and saw that i instantly remembered watching that with you and asking do you think they fucked and of you course. said absolutely of course they did <laughs> Of course they did. So good on her. She's uh could have stuck D. Wallace in this role and had no big issue there. Could oh man, eighties mom. Thing. Yeah, eighties mom. Absolutely. Short blonde hair. Mm-hmm. Like cool, like Yeah. Uh, kind yeah. of overwhelmed. Oh well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is a spinning a lot of plates. D. Wallace role if exactly. I've ever seen one. So Shawnee's football player boyfriend, Paul, shows up. Yeah, and, and she's like, hold on, I want you to meet my dad. And she yeah. takes him in there. And this this one took us by surprise, too. This was funny. I don't know why we didn't see and this. And he, he takes it down, and it's Reverend Del Close. Who what? Had ju- no, it's not Reverend Del Close. It's the, her dad is a different dude. What? Yeah. Her dad's a completely different person. I wrote down her dad is Reverend Dow Close. What? No. What? They're both in. The, he's he's the pharmacist that sold him the condoms. I are you sure? Hundred percent positive. You want yeah, the ripped well, I, or the regular? Dude, are you sure? I'm one hundred percent sure. I watched this whole movie thinking Dell Close was Shawnee Smith's dad. No, they're two completely different people who are in a scene with each other. Oh. You have a face blindness. It's okay. Man. Well, it was still funny. The joke was still funny. It works either way because they were both in that scene they where were, he yeah. was buying the condom at the pharmacy. That's and true. And he was buying ribbed condoms. But it wasn't even, he He wasn't buying them. His friend was. Yeah. But his, his friend said it was for. Yeah. The friend my, pointed my him friend. out and I'm was like, I'm getting them for friend. him. Yeah. Even though they were actually for his friend. Uh, but yeah. So the dad puts down the newspaper and is like, ribbed. <laughs> Because he was getting ribbed condoms. It's funny. It is. It's great in context when you don't mistake the character. I could see the, the confusion. Joke. And the joke still landed. It is. Yeah, it worked. They both um, have the same build. They have yeah. dark hair and glasses. Yeah. I could. Yeah, I could see your confusion. Uh, so what? Flag finds Can Man trying to hack off his hand. <laughs> yeah, because the Can Man like pops up in a jump scare and then like and just starts hacks at hacking his at his wrist. Flag. It's so scary. Yeah, but can you imagine? I really want this to be a house at Universal now. Yeah, because he could be a thing that jumps out and he's trying to chop off his hand and they could spray the water on you like Ooh. it's blood. Yeah, he he doesn't chop off his hand because that's probably really hard. Yeah, very. Yeah. And he, so he runs out of the woods and, and he. Flag chases after him. Yep. But then uh, this dude gets hit. Wow. Immediately just plowed over by, by Shawnee. Paul and, and Paul. Shawnee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then Flag comes out after him and they know each other because they all go to school together. And there's a hilarious. I love Flag, by the way. He has one moment uh, right in this scene when he gets in the car with them where he like leers at Shawnee Smith and like checks her up and down, which kind of sucks. But besides that, he is hilarious. And, like, I love Kevin Dillon's performance in it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, because the guy gets hit by Paul's car, and then Flag comes out of the woods, and Paul's like, Flag, what'd you do to this guy? And Flag's like, Yeah, I'm not the one who bounced him off my car. I'm not the one who bounced him off my car, pal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that guy goes flying. Yeah. But he's still alive. 
So he's alive and just incoherent. So they take him to the hospital. Yeah, and I love that Paul and uh, Shawnee are like, all right, I mean, we hit this guy, but we got to take him to the hospital. We got him. And Flag, come along. You're part of this. And like, Flag doesn't want to, but he does. Like, these people are like, they're good. They're not the kids from I Know What You Did Last Summer. (laughs) They are not. They don't. uh, Fucking what's his name? Ben. Um, Ben oh, I don't Johnson, remember. some shit. I don't remember know. Where they just throw him in the <laughs> ocean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they get to the hospital, and the nurse at the front. That's what I mean about this movie being self aware. Oh, or at yeah. least just it has something to say is the nurse not paying attention when they come in. She's taking her sweet time to yeah, get to them. Funny. And then she looks, and they're, they freak out, and they're like, hey, we have a dude here who's dying. And she just says, Does he have Blue Cross? I don't know. Medical insurance of any kind. It's fun how that was a joke in the 80s. And, and it still, still is. is. <laughs> That's the basis of a whole Saw movie. <laughs> Flag leaves once they get this dude checked into the hospital. He says, if you need me, you know where to find me, which do we? The, the woods? Where are you? <laughs> Paul realizes something's wrong with Cam Man because he walks past his room. And he's like freaking out. Something's, we- yeah, something's moving under the blankets. It's just off. So he goes and grabs a doctor, and he grabs Jack Nance. Oh, yeah, the doctor's Jack Nance. Yeah, Henry Spencer from Eraserhead. Like the main guy from Eraserhead. He's yeah. in other stuff, too. Isn't he? Doesn't he show up in Twin Peaks? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Jack Nance. And Jack Nance in his, like, three lines here is awesome. Yeah. Because uh, he comes out, and he's like, I thought this was the hand patient. And uh, they open, they like lift up the covers, and uh, Can Man is gone. He's Can Man is dissolved. half a man now. Yeah, he dissolved from the waist down. And it's like, <laughs> and it's like, oh shit! Here's the practical effects everyone's been telling me to oh, tell yeah. me about. It's great. The effects in this are a lot of fun. Doctor runs out. Blob falls right on Paul. Mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting him to die this early. That took me by surprise, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Paul dies here. He just gets blobbed. Yep. And the, it's disgusting. Dude, it like absorbs him and melts him. It's fucking awesome. Shawnee finds him and faints because it's so crazy. Yeah, because she runs in and he's reaching out for help and his oh, yeah. face is all fucked up in there. You can kind of see it and it's all dissolved. And then he reaches out to her and she tries to pull him out and just rips his arm off. His arm it's just comes so right gross. off. It's awesome. So it's then so she passes cool. out immediately, which fair. <laughs> Not enough of that in horror movies, you know, when there's an opportunity for it. Yeah. Just someone passing out or vomiting because realistically you would and, you know, not every movie calls for it, but I appreciate it when it happens. I guess the blob doesn't kill her and just goes away because we we come back to like her getting like the cops investigating it, her getting picked up by her parents, and the cops arrest Flag thinking he had to do with this. Of course. They need they need someone to to blame. Well, Taylor was a good kid. Flag's a little punk. Yeah, he yeah. hangs out in the woods. He does, jumping bridges and hanging out with can men. Yeah, he doesn't recycle. So now we meet, uh, we're back to Paul's buddy, Scotty or whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. Come on, Vicky. He's wearing my ring. Who turns out is a date rapist. Date rapist. Full on, unambiguous date rapist. This girl in his car with him is barely forming complete sentences, says that she has had enough to drink, and he says, you can never have enough. Let mm. me make you another... Uh, what does he call it? It's his special... It's like a red... I don't know. It's, it's his like a cherry... specialty drink. Yeah. So he goes to the trunk of his car, opens this thing up. He's got a whole There's on a whole date rape kit in there. bar back there. Yeah, it's like... It reminded me of Brian Fantana from Anchorman, his, like, perf- his like cologne yeah. thing. It's this guy's... It's just like... Yeah, yeah, it felt very Pimp My Ride, if you remember that show. Yeah. Where, without fail, whoever was on it, they would make over the trunk of their car to just fit whatever hobby or job they had. I remember one girl was, I don't know, she liked clothes. So they had a thing where when her trunk opened up, a big like rack popped out that she could put clothes on and stuff. Yo, we got a custom car now. You got a custom wardrobe to go along with it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. 
This is like that, but for a date rape. Oh, we heard you like to date rape. Yeah, so we made you a date rape bar. So you got all kinds of cool, like Hawaiian punch and stuff. He's got a, a thing of jewelry that yeah, we had just it's seen. Yeah, a box him. of class rings. Yeah, that he had. Uh, That's expensive, dude. I don't think, was it class rings? Yeah, because he says, we're going steady. You're wearing my ring. Oh, They're okay. all yeah, the yeah. same ring, I'm pretty sure, which... Mm if you're buying from yeah, fuck dude. what's the what's the company that fuck. Jostens or something it's something like that don't get i mean if you want if i you guess if you want you're never memories. gonna wear a high school ring even a college ring i don't think i would wear yeah guys just, you get a yearbook go with that yearbooks are expensive enough yeah the ring is such a rip off oh man i remember this is I so bad Jostens. i felt so bad we were in high school and my friends were over and we were outside on my front yard and my friend had a class ring. It was huge. <laughs> and it fell off while we were all throwing snowballs and shit at each other. And it just fell into snow. We couldn't find it. And we found it in the spring when all the snow had melted. And it had been run over by my parents' cars like oh, countless man. times. So it was just this That's like five hundred flattened class ring. Oh, know? my God. <laughs> Don't get one. Don't get one. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember exactly how it looked too. It was demolished. Oh God. Okay. He so. gets back in the car and she's out. Yeah. So he starts unbuttoning her shirt. And this is when we're like, okay, blob, where are you at? Yeah, <laughs> give us the blob. It's time now. It's blob time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Yeah, he's literally feeling her up while she's unconscious. So yeah, but when don't he do that. when he actually goes to really cop a feel that's when we realize that the girl she's been blob she's been hollowed out and is a blob now it's kind of like the stuff it is it is a little bit like the stuff yeah so he tries to date rape the blob idiot <laughs> and the blob crawls towards town mm -hmm. um back in the police station the cops are making fun of flag because he wants a lawyer no not the cops the one cop not jeffrey demon Oh, Jeffrey Dimon is an upstanding sheriff, okay. and it's his stupid fuckface deputy Fair. who's like, um, uh, who's who's like talking shit to Flag, and Flag's like giving it back to him because Jeffrey Dimon is like, let him go, we don't have anything on him. Yeah, and the deputy knows like, how the fucking law works. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Any luck with his mama? I can't seem to find her. That's not unusual, is it? She takes little vacations with her pal Johnny Walker Red and anyone else who happens to be around, huh, Brian? This is what happened to Damien Eccles. <laughs> he, yep, was the, just, he was like the flag that. of their town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we, we should uh, they... go meet him and you can tell him that. <laughs> I'm sure he'd appreciate it. <laughs> he was a very nice man when I met him. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a new book coming out. Mm. Shawnee headed to the police station to bail out Flag, but he's already been released on account of there being zero evidence, mm -hmm. as we discussed. So she she picks him up, yeah, in her little in her little bug. Well, she she wants to get his help, and he just totally brushes her off. That's, yeah, because no one will believe her about uh, it was a blob that killed Paul. And yeah, obviously no one's gonna believe that, but she thinks Flag will because mm -hmm. he's he saw Can Man and his uh, hand situation, mm -hmm. Can Man's hand. And so he's all, oh, you never talked to me in class, and now you want my help? Like, yeah, <laughs> I do. Oh, this is after he walks into the closed diner, and they still Ooh, are willing love. to make him a sandwich. Fran this, is. This is the move. I wish I was cool enough. So he goes into this diner. It's closed. He goes in anyway. What? That's like the cool <laughs> thing to do. <laughs> Two, they all know him. Yeah, you know, he says their name and says Kepasa to the the helper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The helper, the employee. <laughs> yeah, who also was in Dream Warriors. What? Yeah, we'll get to it. It's a minor role, but he they still make him food even though they're all shut down for the day. That's a cool thing. Yep. And last cool thing is he sits down by swinging his leg over the back of the chair. That's right. Oh my god. This is a cool guy. Are you looking up this I actor? Up, yeah. I put it on here. I know, but you see you don't know the character for sure and I want to look it up. I do. He's the Okay, so there's a there's a cook dish I I don't know what his job is. He has a hairnet on. He <laughs> is Lorenzo in Dream Warriors. Yeah, I'm not sure who that is. Oh. He's the guy. He's kind of near the beginning, right? Where yeah, he's, he's flirting hitting on with uh, the... Taryn. Yeah. Yeah. That's him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the sheriff is leaving work. The lady at the office is worried because he's not his normal drunk. Well, you're doing all you can, Herb. This isn't your normal Friday night drunk. But he's leaving to go pick up Fran. Uh, yeah, who's, who at the, the who's at the diner? 
because she's making a sandwich for Flag. But their sink is clogged, so Lorenzo mm-hmm. uh, goes to unclog it, gets blobbed. He gets blobbed. It's a good <laughs> jump scare. It is. It's a good jump scare, the blob coming out of him, and then fucking pull him in into the sink, and his yeah. legs are hanging out. He essentially gets snapped and have backwards. And Ooh, yeah. Pull down the sink, which is just, it's so gross and awesome. Yeah. And he gets sucked down that drain, and the pipe's bulging out like Santa Claus going up <laughs> the pipe in Oogie Boogie's lair. There's a lot of the same techniques in this one too that there are in the stuff i noticed a lot of the same Mm. um the mats uh like the yeah the mats are the only things that look bad in this movie yeah they don't look as bad as they did in the blob no or in the stuff yeah yeah yeah. yeah. sorry which is why i wrote this because i think this is around this might have been the first use of a mat is in this scene Okay. I'm not sure. I forget what part, but and that's just where, like, you know, they film the thing that's going to be in the background, and then they have the stuff happen in front of it, or the the blob happen in front of it. Yeah. So what or it is, the it's yeah. the same technique they use in the Invisible Man. So oh. it's basically, it's essentially green screen. What we kind of know is yeah. green screen, but if you're doing it in camera, it's like you, functionally green screen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're essentially filming. So let's say you want someone running away from the blob. You film the person running away over a solid color background. I think in this case, it might be a black background still because we're doing it on film. You film in front of black. So yeah. then when you layer them. Yeah, you layer them. The only problem is it looks layered. It does. Yeah, it looks a little photo collage Mm -hmm. so shawnee and flag run to the freezer to hide and that's when they realize the blob doesn't like the cold yeah because he tries to stick his little blob fingers down to the door and then he's like no he doesn't like it yeah i think they break some of it off break them off a piece of that blob fran meanwhile like makes her way out of a window and gets into a phone booth where she tries to call the police station she asks for the sheriff and the whoever answers the phone says oh well he went to the diner and mm-hmm. that's what we see he's, he's been blobbed. in the blob because the blob is starting to surround the phone booth yeah and then his skeleton so jeffrey demon is dead yeah that was another one that i was like i did not expect him to go so early yeah thought he would be around longer she keeps on coming the blob just breaks into the phone booth i thought maybe she would get away but then it got to a point where i thought no it's there's no way you can't yeah. get it's out. a very cool shot from like the top of the phone booth where it just the glass all breaks and fran gets totally it's like it's like a wave that like sweeps her up and then comes back down and mm-hmm. it looks crazy it's awesome. Yeah, I, I want to frame by frame that yeah. part because I was wondering how they did. But yeah, this movie that is effect. killing everybody, man. Yeah. Reverend Del Close shows up to the empty diner. He senses something's wrong, obviously, because there's no lights on and all the windows are busted. So he walks in and he finds a crystal blob. Oh, yeah, from the freezer. Mm-hmm. He, he finds it, he puts a part a of the crystal blob. So he grabs it and puts it in a jar. Yeah, that was my favorite. Uh, Indiana Jones sequel, Indiana Jones and the Crystal Blob. Shawnee and Flag go to the woods to look for the sheriff. They don't know he's dead. So they find the contamination team from E.T. instead. (laughs) Basically. I'm Dr. Meadows. We're a government-sanctioned biological containment team. Biological containment? We're microbe hunters, young lady. This containment team shows up in, let's see, E.T. Stranger Things. Dreamcatcher. Yeah, dream by Morgan Freeman. It's always in the woods. Mm -hmm. They always always have the hazmat suits on. Mm -hmm. They're always scary. I don't want to get a. Oh no! The if 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 I ever run into an area and find that I'm the only one not in a hazmat suit, I'm feeling pretty bad about myself. Yeah, you're you're kind of collateral damage at that point. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) they're uh, containment teams are very big picture people. Yeah, they're not. It's, It's always. It's it's fine to kill them if it means saving saving the world, the world always, That's which is always what this their movie deal. is. Yeah, uh, the lead scientist, Doctor Meadows, mm-hmm. is the one in charge, and yeah, he literally says that aloud. He calls the citizens expendable. Yeah, <laughs> they also believe in the bacteria theory of extinction. <laughs> they do, he does drop that one. He drops that one in like, very confidently. The dinosaurs ruled our planet for millions of years, and yet they died out almost overnight. Why? The evidence suggests that a meteor fell to Earth bearing an alien bacteria. Very matter-of-factly, well, the dinosaurs were knocked out by an alien bacteria. Mm -hmm. It's like, what? We cut to the movie theater playing Garden Tool Massacre. We see a great (laughs) clip of it. It's great. Yeah, because it opens up on it and you don't. 
know that it's the movie uh inside a movie yet but yeah it's a guy and a girl uh, on a date and they hear like a chainsaw it's awfully late to be hedge clipping <laughs> and then they look and the guy looks up and he has a hockey mask <laughs> and the guy's like wait a minute hockey season ended months ago and yeah so it's a jason ripoff yes. but it's, it's that it's that hockey mask chainsaw combo yep. that is prevalent in popular culture even though there's not an actual bill it's just this uh yeah uh, collage of jason and leatherface yeah. yeah yeah happens a lot there's a guy sitting behind them behind the little brother and his friend oh, yeah. who's talking the whole movie and is ruining everything mm-hmm. so they keep shushing him you know that guy's gonna die oh, watch she's gonna run in the lodge and hide but he's gonna get her anyway please be quiet you shut up up in the projector room is a character credited as Hobbs the Projectionist. Great. So, yeah. <laughs> and he's uh, getting too hot because the air conditioning's off because there's a blob there. Yeah, he figures that the AC must be plugged up. So he puts on his, uh, they're like glasses, little lights on them that are for. <laughs> they look pretty cool. Yeah. Those are basically for operating the projector in the dark. I would like them to look for things under the couch. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So he looks and <laughs> he looks into the vent and there's a blob in there. He gets blobbed. And Shawnee and Fly get put into the containment team's van. That's never good. Don't oh. ever get into a van. I forgot them. that like, yeah, this the scene in the projection booth happens and then we cut away from the movie theater for a while and then we come back to it like, Blob, what are you doing during that whole time? You know? Watching the movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'll wait until oh, I haven't seen this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is this is that new one. Mm-hmm. Garden Massacre, a new beginning. Yeah, maybe maybe he's just taking his time and eating the projectionist. Maybe yeah. that's what or happened. Maybe it's just parallel editing. This stuff's like, happening the same time. Sure. We just have to see it. Whhatever. But yeah, Shawnee and Flag are in the the van, but Flag's like, no, fuck this. Fuck this. I read internet forums. <laughs> <laughs> I know that this is some conspiracy shit. I'm getting out of this van. Yeah, so he busts out. Yeah, and Shawnee's like, they're trying to help us. Yeah, Shawnee, the... Uh, well, I don't want to make assumptions, but it's more likely that as a uh, successful, beautiful cheerleader, things have just gone okay for her in her life. So sure. she's going to trust the trust she's going to trust authority. Where Flag yeah, literally sure. says aloud, "I have a problem with authority figures." He he says his D and D character trait aloud, his ideal or whatever. No, it would be like his character flaw or something. Yeah, like, yeah I yeah. have problems with authority. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he says that and busts out. Yeah. And then goes back to uh, get his bike from the woods. And that's when he overhears the the scientists in charge say that people, they, they, the, the town is they Yeah, they say they're, they're D&D. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I believe that the greater good is more important and that people are expendable. Mm-hmm. Everyone in the town gets crawled into the town hall. There's people still in the movie theater. Uh, which Shawnee knows her brother is there because she knows that he snuck out to see a movie. And so she runs over there to go save him Mm -hmm. and this is when we have just movie theater blob massacre yeah this is when i'm like oh fucking kill count's gonna suck yeah fair yeah and that's gonna just continue to suck later on as the blob continues to kill more people in the town but first it starts with just that annoying guy sitting behind him Mm -hmm. but then it starts killing a bunch of people in the theater shawnee gets there to save her brother and his uh headphones wearing friend why is he wearing headphones in a movie dude what the fuck are you listening to this isn't a museum you're on some audio tour of the pictures you're watching mm-hmm. take your headphones off I think and enjoy he's the- just like the friend with attitude he's yeah like he the bad definitely influence is friend he definitely is the friend with attitude absolutely yeah see where that attitude gets him real soon oh dead yeah they kill a <laughs> fucking kid they kill this kid in this movie i thought you were talking real world i'm like what's going on in the world oh, okay oh yeah no 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 <laughs> um the three of them escape. He has and to fight in the Gulf War. That's what I thought you were going for. I was like, all right. Sure. <laughs> they all escape into the sewer. Um, <laughs> at the same time, Flag is still in the woods, and he sees the containment team pulling a metal sphere out of the ground. There's an American flag sticker on the sphere, so oh, we know right. that it's by, we did it, we put it there. <laughs> it's yeah, like, and they and they mention, they're like, mm-hmm. they spell it out. like Yeah, yeah. this is an exposition-heavy scene. The mm. whole scientist team is like, back when we put this thing into space and blah, 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 it had an experiment in it, and it's like a... It was a biological warfare experiment, of and it was a germ that essentially just it mutated. It got too big. It just started. Yeah, it, it went out of control and then uh, crashed. So the government 
created the blob. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The blob is government created. And again, this angle not present in the original one. Mm. I don't think they'd be able to get away with that nope. in the original. That I don't know. movie's not getting made. Maybe. <laughs> um, not without McCarthy coming after your ass. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> The, so Dr. Meadows, who's the lead scientist, declares openly to everyone, just in case we didn't know what his deal was, that um, the world, the safety of the world against the Russians, we're dropping the Russians here too at this part, uh, that's more important than this town. And so citizens are expendable. Yep. This is basically the ethos of my Dungeons and Dragons character, by the way. <laughs> Uh, so okay, they see flag. They see flag. They they're grab like him. after him. He's yeah. a contained citizen trying to get away. And he basically, oh my god, he basically ets out of the <laughs> woods because he rides his bike and and does the he jump. Makes the jump. Yeah, but there's Good not ets, that up in the so it doesn't. He doesn't fly after he does no, the just jump. No, it's <laughs> With but... that score. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> but there's still like a helicopter chasing him, but he hides from it. It works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, so the scientists at this point figure out that the blob is underneath the town in the sewer slash, uh, sewer slash aqueducts, mm-hmm. which I think are all connected. They must be because Shawnee and the two boys are, they go into the sewers through a grate and they are then in the same system that all the scientists are running around in. Whatever. I don't think it's that important. Yeah. Um, What's it, what is important is that kid gets fucking killed. Yeah, dude. He gets killed so badly good yeah it's it, really scary like it's i thought it was disturbing got a kid death because yeah, he's what, in like movie. 13 probably yeah and yeah it's uh it's, it's her brother's through friend the, through the sewers the blob grabs him because they realize it's under the water so it grabs him and they try and save him and he is like reaching out for them and he's already a fucking zombie yeah the brother is able to fit out of the sewer grate yeah and shawnee can't because she's too big and flag rescues her they run into one dude from the containment team, Bill Mosley. <laughs> yeah, fucking Bill Mosley. Um, the blob got, like, killed the rest of the containment team. They, yeah, they they are almost out of a manhole, and uh, the lead scientist knows that they're down there and just has like a truck fucking oh my park its tire God. on the manhole to trap them Cause down there. Because they see, because they they go to get to rescue Bill Mosley, but then they look and they see flag is down there, and they're like. Put the, put the cover back on. <laughs> yeah. It's very, it's cruel. I love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Bob also gave uh, Shawnee a haircut. Grabbed her by the hair That's and like right. disintegrate yes. her hair. Because the Bob is like acidic, if we didn't mention that. Yeah. He kind of dissolves It'll dis- That's why that one dude was dissolved. It high off. And, and high off. My God. Yeah, it singes her hair. It reminds me of that video of that. <laughs> Have you seen that video of that girl curling her hair on YouTube? No. <laughs> She's doing a <laughs> tutorial and she... Oh, it like goes to curly hair and it's on too hot and then when she goes to take it away just like all of her hair comes oh god that sucks <laughs> that's what it looks <laughs> and like and sounds like is if you just curl your probably hair smells a little too awful. long it smells like shit probably but luckily bill mosley has like a fucking missile launcher on his back that yeah flags... we weren't sure what this was yeah flag just grabs this boy and shoots it okay he shoots it up at the manhole cover and it hits the bottom of the manhole cover but then the vehicle on top of the manhole fucking blows up. Why not? Whatever. I don't care if it's not possible. Just, you know. Just get him out of there. Who cares? <laughs> Blow it up. It is a huge fucking explosion. It's, yeah, it's pretty cool. And so they're able to get out of the uh, thing and have a good old standoff. Everyone's yeah, pointing guns at each other. This is like Reservoir Dog style standoff. We're all pointing guns at each other. Um, the, that deputy who has uh, got a real problem with flag, he's part of it. Yeah, apparently in this scene, I'm not exactly sure what character Colonel Hargis is. Okay. Played by Jack Rader. Um, according to Wikipedia, Jack Rader is a member of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives representing the 176th House District in Monroe County, Pennsylvania. Any, any Monroe County people out there? <laughs> Your state rep is a dude in this movie. So the blob gets out of the sewer and grabs the lead scientist. He grabs Dr. Meadows, right? Yeah. The Drags blob him kills into him, the yeah. sewer. And then everyone else, I wasn't sure what, what the scene was. Was it they all didn't like Dr. Meadows? And so now they're free to just do whatever. So they all fired on the manhole. Oh, what? I think they're just trying to kill the blob. They're just trying to kill the blob. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I figured they would have tried that already. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but they, yeah, they, so they all, they all fire their weapons down the manhole, which pisses off the blob because angry, <laughs> angry blob. And it 
bursts out of the street. Lots of mats in this scene because yeah. the blob is huge. And yeah, now it's like huge. Yeah, it's covering the whole street. It's and this is where I'm like, Kill Counting sucks. Yeah. He's just snatching random people out of the ground, and they, everyone what barricades themselves in the uh, town hall. They're all in the town hall. Yeah, classic. They're all trying to. So what happens is is Shawnee grabs a fire extinguisher and she sprays the blob because she knows it doesn't like cold. So she's able to kind of fend it off while they all go to the town hall and start to like barricade themselves in. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, Reverend Douglas is pumped for the end time. That's right. He is. He's real excited about this. This has all been prophesied. He's very, uh, what's her face from the mist. Oh, um, Marsha Gay Harden. Yes. I forgot her character's name. Yes. Uh, Carmody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So he's like, this was all prophesized, and he's all... You know, you know, when this movie started, I was like, oh, cool. It doesn't seem like De- Reverend Del Close is going to be a, uh, the stereotypical end times preacher. No, nope, there he, he is. He is. <laughs> yeah, he's I never... Just... I always kind of like it. I'm, that's a that's a trope I'm always whatever with. You, I'm kind of into it. You see it. it enough times, though. It's I guess. like, give me a priest who's not like but that. But like... I guess the walking dead inevitably it's a trope and a character where whoever is playing that character gets to just chew scenery sure i kind of like marsha gay harden just fucking great in the mist yeah yeah. (laughs) i mean you just hate her so much Mm. she's so good they're trying to barricade the town hall the deputies pushing a bookshelf up against a window and the blob (laughs) reaches in through the window through the back of the bookcase grabs him and then again just snaps him in half and yeah, pulls backwards. him through yeah it's, it's, it's very so much like the gross. uh jason lives sheriff kill where he just gets folded in half mm. backwards mm. nice and gross and crunchy flag is on his way to town hall with a snowmaker truck i was googling these because i wasn't super familiar um yeah these are a thing really apparently a lot of ski resorts are completely dependent on snowmaker trucks and there's a whole thing in the wikipedia about these about the environmental impact of (laughs) snow trucks because yeah like running like wasting that much energy to make snow and in some cases make snow where there shouldn't be snow is gonna fuck with the ecosystem (laughs) but especially now you know, climate change, more resorts have to use. So essentially because of climate change, we're creating more climate change because we have to use the energy to make the snow. Hey, maybe don't ski then. Maybe just, maybe just don't ski or go somewhere that still has snow. I mean, I guess it's the economy of these towns. Yeah. Nobody wins. Yeah. Nobody wins. Yep. So the snow acre gets flipped over by the blob and Shawnee uses a gun to distract the blob because she knows flag is in there and then she runs over to the truck and plants a bomb that she gets from uh one of the containment yeah team. i think they have like are they grenades i don't know i don't know they have a lot of a lot they're of walking weapons. around with grenades strapped to their fucking chest yeah like, what one guy even while he's getting blobbed like pulls the grenades out yeah, and, and gets, blows himself up yeah that's pretty that's cool that's pretty cool <laughs> um so he she puts a bomb on the snow truck so that the tanks of liquid nitrogen will blow up mm-hmm. and create snow and kill the blob but she gets stuck her pant like gets stuck or something but then she gets saved but it's a whole it's a good sequence i really yeah. like her character her character's great. her character's really really she's good she's really badass and uh just very likable even from like early on in the scene when she's getting ready for a date with paul and like her mom accidentally washed her sweater and it shrunk just the interaction between her and her mom really establishes her immediately as a really likable person because yeah. like, she's not mad she's like oh this, that's a funny look and then the mom's like i can give you on my sweater and she's like oh great yeah and just like she's it, a it's likable a lot of, character for because sure. of shawnee smith is very likable mm-hmm. like she's great yep that bomb blows up and in all the snow makes the blob turn to crystal and i say this is technically a christmas movie now <laughs> yep <laughs> that's what counts uh yeah that defeats the, the end blob. of this when it's all the snow coming down feels very christmas movie mm-hmm. everyone's gonna learn like whatever yeah, it's lesson a, it's, a, it's a wonderful blobby life also i just realized earlier in the movie i think is it shawnee who is looking a character's looking at a snow globe at one point oh i'm not sure it's kind of foreshadowing the end maybe Ooh. yep so the blob turns to crystal apparently they go and store it in the there's like a warehouse they put it in where it'll be cold good i think it i think it goes in like the I think Moss takes it and puts it in the place where he keeps the snowmaker. That's stuff. right, yeah. Because mm-hmm. Moss survived. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good. I I'm mean, glad. he was only in that one kind of scene. Yeah, he was fine. End, and but... he did like a nice thing. Yeah. He's fine. And his voice is cool. Yeah. 
We, there's a little denouement with I a tent sermon this. with Reverend Del Close giving a I was classic w- like oh, so tent sermon. Wormwood falls from heaven, consuming sinner and saint alike. Who shall be lifted up to rapture when the judgment trump blows? But yeah, he gives a sermon about, about end, times. end times. It's great, and, and then he goes back and so my shit. He has it. he has his little jar of blob that is thawed out and is wiggling around, and he's all excited. Oh my! I mean, his capacity here to start a really effective cult because obviously, like a blob taking over this whole town, especially since the containment team as as been taken care of quote unquote like they didn't win Mm -hmm. so the town is free to explain what happened and they have frozen blob to prove it prove it quote unquote so this guy has this jar of blob that almost destroyed a whole town and he's like i'm gonna unleash this upon the world and bring about like he guaranteed end times you got a cult right there because cults are all about the end times and when you have like like a one-way ticket guaranteed but it's so small if he can't let anyone know about it while it's still smaller else all they gotta do is get a fire extinguisher that's true (laughs) (laughs) boom (laughs) Boom. take that end times preacher (laughs) oh boy so that's uh that's That's the the blob blob. i liked it as much as everyone told me i would yep which is great it's always good when that happens Mm -hmm. and i expect it to yeah it's a good movie. It's uh like I said, the characters are smart, which I appreciate. Uh, people people compared it to the thing when they would tell me that I like it, and I I would say the the commonalities are yeah, smart characters body and horror. and some body horror with some good practical effects. But this is a much uh more comedic tone. Mm-hmm. It's not like full on comedy, but it's a lighter tone than the thing for sure. Yeah, and um and uh, well, no, it's still got kind of a. Not a nihilistic ending, but there's still that uh, like. Uh. But yeah, it's it's much more uh, lighthearted and yeah, optimistic. I would say than the thing. Um, still like a self-contained setting, which is cool. Um, but it does it does have those projection shots, which kind of suck. Yeah, they're the only bad effects. All the practical uh, gore effects are great. Mm-hmm. Damn projection shots, man! They always yeah, because then I always think of the shots in Labyrinth, the chilly down. Yeah, those are those real always bad. look weird. Those to are me. real bad. Those are the I know for sure they did the black velvet background with those. Those are Invisible Man style yeah. matte effects, and they look really weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's okay. Product of their times. Yes. Yeah, check it out. Check out the Blob, mm-hmm. 1988 by Chuck Russell. Yeah, co-written by Frank Darabont. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. It's good. Not like our movie next week. Nope. Should we tell them or should we just... No, let's keep... We'll keep it a little secret. Okay. We're about to record it right now. We're about to record it. I'm excited, though. It's going to be a fun episode. It's a bad movie. (laughs) It's really bad. It's a real bad movie. So let's get to recording that. So yeah, stay tuned. So I can get that taste out of my mouth. But (laughs) until then, make sure you follow Dead Meat on social media at Dead Meat James on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm at Carebeck, C-A-R-E-B-E-C-C on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want merch, deadmeatstore.com. Deadmeatpod at gmail.com is who you should email for any thoughts, comments, feedback, whatever. That's Chelsea's email. The Dead Meat. I was thinking maybe you should make Dead Meat Chelsea gmail.com it's another email i, I know we have so many know. fucking emails <laughs> yeah so just dead meat pod is chelsea's dead meat email mm-hmm. and make sure you rate and review us on itunes or whatever app you use to listen to this bad boy mm-hmm. uh yeah we'll have that awful awful shitty fucking movie next week yeah and so and then when we get back on a normal schedule so it'll be review 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 then we'll have a research episode that and that's going to be, I'll just say what it is. We're going to do a native American tropes in horror, specifically the idea of quote unquote Indian burial grounds. So we're going to okay. talk a lot about the shining. We're going to talk about pet cemetery, poltergeist, those kinds of movies. And we're going to have a guest on for that. Who, it's um, our more friend knowledgeable than us. <laughs> yeah. Our friend Joey, who, if you look at his work at all, he does a lot of really cool, talks and stuff about represent uh native representation and media yeah. and i think he even released a zine and it sold really well which <laughs> he, is so cool he also convinced a group of people who met him in an alleyway that he had the lead singer of smash mouth with him oh my god that's right that was the whole thing he has done incredible he's very he's also stuff. one of the so it'll be cool to, to tackle some really <laughs> 
maybe some heavy stuff and and some more serious stuff. Yeah. And really, you know, critiquing the the movies and things we love, but doing that with someone who is so funny, I yeah. think is it's going to be <laughs> very very good. I'm excited. Yeah. Cool. Until then, I'm James. I'm Chelsea. And this has been the Dead Meat Podcast. <laughs>